some for more on this, let me now bring in our guest, Anna Jubin Brett, is the Secretary of the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. And we also have He Jingjing, an Associate Professor with the Inter Institute of International Law at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Great to have you both with us. So let Thank me start you. with Professor He here. So we've just mentioned a set of core values China has been emphasizing on, but how do you think we can communicate these values, which are uniquely China probably, to the international community? Thank you very much for having me here. And yes, I totally agree with you. There are a lot of values that are shared by other countries, and it's quite important to communicate to the outside world what real China is like. And um, basically, um, under the guidance of Xi Jinping's Wu Tang diplomacy, China has made great efforts to let the outside world to know what we are doing. Uh, despite all the great efforts, however, I have to say that there are still some stereotypes mm -hmm. about China. So it's quite important to communicate our true image to the outside world, to let our voice be heard. I think in order to better our communication to the outside world, at least the following three aspects we, we might need to pay attention to. Firstly, I think not only we should make good use of the traditional and official channel of communications like CGTN, we also need to make good use of the new media and to communicate in a more lively way so that people will feel like you're not told to do something but you're actually uh, learn uh, to, to feel and to see with your own eyes. And secondly, I think it's quite important to, to encourage people-to-people -people communication. This is one important part of the Belt and Road strategies about people-to-people -people link. And so, for example, I think we should encourage like, academic exchange among scholars. We, get, we invite experts to come in so that they know what real China is like and also could go out mm -hmm. to let peop people know what we are really doing. And thirdly, I think it's quite important to stress that since Anna is also here, mm -hmm. is that China should get more involved in the international arena, right. especially United Nations, which is really a great platform for China to, to talk about our true values and what we are doing. And uh, just as you mentioned, we, we aim to do a lot to actually to make our share of contribution to the betterment of this world. So I think China should do more and to get more involved in mm -hmm. the drafting of international rule of law and regulations. I think that's Anna's area, yeah, actually. Anna, let me bring you into this. So you've worked with the UN. How have you been looking at China's efforts in promoting these socialist core values, especially one of the key words is rule of law. How do you assess China's efforts on that front? Well, China is a very active country as far as we are concerned in uh, the, international com the Commission on International Trade Law on CITRAL. Uh, China plays a very active role, uh, not only in the deliberations, the discussions, but also in the shaping of the instruments that become international conventions or model laws that will then be applied across the board in all countries of the world. Uh, China's role is, is key in the sense of, of course, the importance of China in international trade makes it a major partner and a major voice when it comes to how to facilitate trade, how to make trade work better. And let me take two examples. Uh, one that has really to do with uh, promoting um, some or, or identifying some areas where there are gaps or where there are needs for rules uh, for the international law that will then be applied. And in this context, uh, China, with its Belt and Road Initiative, uh, is working on establishing new forms of links between countries and one of these links is uh, through railways for long distance carriage of goods and uh, there is a, a particular need that uh, China brought to our commission and we will be working uh, in uh, exploring the um, rules for uh, uh, carriage of goods and for uh, international uh, bill of lading for railway transport. Another example I could give uh, also of China's leading role is in uh, its accession to a very recently concluded uh, international convention on international mediation that was concluded uh, in the uh, United Nations and China was one of the uh, first countries to 
put its signature at the bottom of this international convention, thereby also playing a very important leading role, leading by example, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in uh, international law. So in, uh, in our view, uh, what is important is to uh, be active, to participate, and by participating and making your voice heard, uh, to also contribute to shaping international right. law that you then want to promote as the rule of law. Right, and China is a country that's constantly modernizing itself, it's constantly reforming, but these set of core socialist values, Professor Ho, such as the rule of law, freedom, justice, what do you think those will mean for the country's future? Well, I think those are very important values for China, and actually, as you mentioned, it's also quite a lot of those cool values also shared by other countries and are, I mean, adopted by the United Nations. As Anna mentioned, China has, I mean, made great achievements in getting involved deeply in the drafting of international rule of law. And as, as you mentioned, justice and rule of law are really important core cool value for our country and for the future. I think uh, basically this is a global community. We're not so different from other countries, if I put that way. That's why our president, Xi Jinping, mentioned that we should strive to to make our share of contribution to the building of a community of shared future for mankind. So, I mean, under that guidance, I mean, guidance of Xi Jinping's thought on diplomacy and our concept, I think we are making great achievements in that regard. And I think those values will really help us to get more involved on the global arena and also to prepare our, I mean, ourselves better for the construction of our our country, yeah. both in terms of economics and the social system. Definitely, so. and there's a sense of connection there. We do live in a global community after all. Thank you very much, Professor you. and Anna. Good to talk to you both. Thank, Thank you. you.